our position remains defensive. We think um, what's happening here uh, over the last few weeks is um, is really a reflection of the once in a generation or the most aggressive rate hikes we've seen in, in a generation. And there's consequences to that. Um, and, you know, coming into this year, we, we were on more of the defensive front, thinking that would have an impact. We didn't know when and we didn't know where, but we're starting to see that impact. And I think even in the U.S. markets yesterday, what you saw is that the banks made a, a made a fresh low. So they went below the low of a few weeks ago. That's important in our view, a negative. And as you mentioned this morning, we're seeing that overseas as well. The banks in, in Europe are, are, are a big part of those indexes. So if they're weak, it's hard for those markets to make uh, traction. So at, at this point, um, you know, when we look at the overall you know, valuations for the market, you're trading around the average valuations, well, in our view, Frank, that we see above average risk for the market. So we just, at this point, are still in that defensive mode. All right. So I want to run some statistics by you really quick, Keith. So tightening by the Fed and worries over banks resulting in investors continuing to dive their money into U.S. money market funds. According to new data from the Investment Company Institute, this week marked the second week in a row that funds have seen net inflows of more than $100 billion. So let's look at the big number here, $117 billion this past week. That's on top of the $120 billion in inflows last week marking the highest weekly inflows since June of 2020. That's obviously the height of the pandemic when we had so much uncertainty. What does that tell you about investor sentiment? Well, I, I think it's fragile. Uh, you know, sometimes we look at a big move into money markets, as an example, as a contrarian indicator when cash levels get really high. But I would say overall, as we look across at different surveys, as far as overall equity exposure, is still relatively high. Um, and I think also part of that money market is, is also realizing there's a, there's a lot of, um, you know, risk and you're still in a money market, still getting, you know, 4% plus yields at this point. That's likely to come down over, the, over time if the Fed uh, cuts rates, but on a relative basis, it's still somewhat attractive. From our overall position, in, Frank, we are uh, underweight equities. We actually used the rally in January to cut back equities. We're overweight fixed income and we're also overweight uh, cash as well. And going back to fixed income, we're really focused on just keeping it simple in high quality, uh, high quality bonds. Again, this is not a time where we think it makes sense to uh, take a lot of risk uh, across the capital markets. So let me ask you a little bit more about that. When you say you're, you're overweight on bonds, are we talking just short term bonds? A lot of people are really advocating for really piling into those short term bonds. But do you also see any value in the long term bonds at this point? Yeah, well, the first thing, the most important thing I would say is that we're in high quality. We don't think this is the time to be in credit or things like high yield or leveraged loans that are more leveraged to the overall economic cycle. And then to your point directly, we've been using more of what we call a barbell approach for fixed income, meaning you know, ha having short-term treasuries or government type of issues, taking advantage of those, of those high yields. But also, if the economy is going to slow down later in the year, as we expect, you also want to have longer duration bonds um, say, you know, 10 years and, 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 uh, and over, because if you have an economic slowdown, overall yields tend to come down. And when you look back at history, especially during recessions, longer, longer duration bonds actually outperform, especially on a total return basis. The other good thing, Frank, that we're seeing this year, we're seeing again this morning, is that bonds have this kind of in, in, inverse or bond yields have this inverse uh, relationship with stocks. That's a change from what we saw last year and a positive from an asset allocation perspective.